No, Jason. Uh, so, uh, to, to refresh your memory and to summarize for the purposes of the video here, uh, we have our person holding the bowling ball here. They're going to drop it. It comes back here and then swings back toward them. We're trying to figure out which one of these is the most likely situation. It smashes into their face, just barely touches, or we have some space in between there, we have a, a miss. Uh, so, what do we think is the most likely outcome based on what you know about energy? A pack show and start. Um, I feel like it's tap. It, it will, tap one. Yeah, it, depending on where you place the volume of the, if you put it right, um, like maybe behind your head. Right, please. If you put the ball behind your head, then it's going to go bam because it's going the same amount of distance, so the same potential energy. But if you put it like in front of your face, then it'll probably go like half. Still going the same amount of distance. Okay, so you think it's going to come back to the same position wherever that yeah. may be, however you, you have it set up. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think it's going to be few because it's going to slowly over time, that's going friction is. The friction of the energy, thermal energy will increase, so it'll be less energy to go back and forth because it's slowly getting caught in the middle, so it'll just barely miss. Okay, so we're not going to get back to the same position because we have energy that's been lost to thermal energy as a result of friction. Yes. Thank you. All right, Faith. I feel like it's going to be tapped because, like we said, like the total energy never changes. Uh -huh. So it might just. Okay, tap because total energy never changes. Very good. All right. Uh, so let's uh, let's run through two possible scenarios just with some simple numbers. I'm just going to make up numbers for energy amounts, and we can track these through. First time through, let's say that. Um, we don't have enough an effect of any kind of a frictional force or what else might slow down the bowling ball? Gravity actually doesn't in this case. That one is going to be an inside force. Gravity lets it change from potential to kinetic or kinetic to potential, but it's not going to transfer any energy outside of the system. That is something that the, defining the system and what's an internal versus an external force, that's something you don't do much until you get to a physics class. So in this case, gravity makes it speed up on the way down. It makes it slow down when it's going back up. Those two effects are going to balance each other. So we don't have to worry about gravity. But what other forces might slow it down? The thermal, because of the friction causing at the very top, mm -hmm. we're moving side to side. Okay, so friction at the anchor point there leads to thermal energy. What other forces? Um, like another like external force, like a person that might have gotten in the way of the bowling ball mm -hmm. might disturb it. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna make sure that that doesn't happen. But you can imagine a scenario where somebody over here interferes with the bowling ball somehow, either slows it down a little bit or jerk move here, gives it a little push, you know, just to destroy a human being over here. We're not going to have that happen. So, uh, assuming that we have no human beings interfering with it in any way along the path here, we have some friction at the anchor point. What else is going to slow that ball down? What does it have to move through the whole time? Air. Air. It does, and so that tends to slow things down too. It takes some amount of energy, uh, some amount of energy is lost just pushing through that air, pushing the air out of the way. Uh, so as a result, we expect some energy to change into thermal energy, but maybe it's a really small amount. Maybe it's an unnoticeably small amount. So let's just talk, uh, talk through some numbers here. Uh, first off, starting with the bowling ball way up high, so up against my face here, but not moving. What type or types of energy are present at this moment right here? Potential. Potential, Potential energy. Energy of being up high or energy of position. Uh, so, and let's let's say that we start out with how about ten joules of energy. Ten joules. Ten capital J. Joules. All right. So then we get down here, and what kind of energy do we have there? Kinetic. Kinetic. It's down low, so we don't have that potential energy anymore, or at least we've lost potential energy. But it doesn't just disappear. The other thing that happens is, um, well, what happens as it gets lower? What else happens? Changes about its motion. Something's going downhill. What happens to it? 
Mm -hmm. It goes faster. It gets faster and faster. Yeah. So that's the kinetic energy piece of this. So we've got kinetic energy there. And if we're assuming right now that friction and air resistance are really, really tiny, insignificantly tiny forces, how much kinetic energy do we expect to have there? Oh. How much? Mass times velocity squared. One half mass oh. times velocity squared. Okay, but what, what would we expect the answer to that uh, problem would be? Mm -hmm. The same amount, because they even out. We do. We had 10 joules of potential energy. That's all gone because it's as low as it can get now. What happened to the 10 joules of potential energy? It became kinetic energy. So we got 10 joules here. Okay, up here, what kind of energy? Potential, potential energy. Colors the same. How much? Yeah, 10 joules there. All right, then it swings back down this direction. What do we have for energy at that point? How much? Okay. 10 joules. All right, and then right back up here, what do we have at the very end? 10 joules of, of potential. Okay. Okay, now, if the baseball here is at the right size, if we start out with this baseball and say it has 10 joules of energy when it's right there, and then we move it through whatever motion, doesn't have to be the, the arc motion, but any kind of a motion, and we want to get the baseball back to a state where it has 10 joules of potential energy, what has to be true of the baseball to be sure it has 10 joules exactly of potential energy? Kinetic energy, turns out, doesn't affect potential energy directly. So there can be a trade-off between those two, but I could give this thing 10 joules of potential energy regardless of what it has for kinetic energy if I'm affecting it directly. So what has to be true to make sure this thing has 10 joules? It had 10 joules when it was right here. Oh, the same, same weight? No, the weight hasn't changed, so we're good there. What else has to be true? Does it have 10 joules right now? Does it have 10 joules right now? Height. It has to be back at the same height. So yeah. whatever happens there, to give it back to 10 joules, I have to get it back to that same height. <coughs> Since it's attached to a rope, there's only one spot over here that has that height and one spot over here that has that height. So I gotta get right back here. So which scenario have we described there? It gets right back to the same position it was launched at. Yeah. 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 Right, good. What if it's losing energy, or energy is changing into thermal energy? Let's get rid of these numbers. We'll start out with 10 joules up there again, but let's say every new stage we lose one joule of energy. So how much do we have when it gets down here? Nine. Nine, okay. And then next one? Eight. Eight. Here? Seven. Seven. Well, you guys are so good at counting down. Good, and last six. one, six. six. So, okay. Six joules. Okay, now it was at 10 joules up here. Now it's only at six joules. So what has to be true of this thing so that it only has six joules of energy? It lost some, some energy. My baseball's at 10 joules right now. Oh, the height. Is it at six joules right now? No. What's it at right now? Ten. Ten joules. So where does it have to be to have six joules? Down lower. Down lower. So in this scenario, it actually doesn't end right there. It ends somewhere down here with six joules. Okay, so which scenario did we just describe here? Yeah, we get some space there. So if air resistance and friction are uh, noticeable effects, we expect that few is going to be our outcome. If they're unnoticeable, they're really, really small effects, and most of our energy stays in kinetic and potential, then we expect a tap scenario. Either way, though, we shouldn't get a bam scenario unless we add energy into the system somehow. We're going to be very careful not to add energy into the system. Yeah. Oh, you can get banned by getting closer to the ball as it comes to you. That's a good point. We don't actually have to give the ball more energy. We could just encounter the ball when not all of that energy is potential. So get to the ball before it gets up to that height. So if the ball is released from this position, it swings out that direction, and then I move my face down here, I'm going to meet that ball when it has 10 joules of energy either way, but 
at this stage, it's not all potential energy. Some of it's kinetic energy. And then shortly after that, some of it is going to be, ow, my face, energy, which is not an official energy type. Don't put that down on a chest. Questions there? Let's try it. So here's our pendulum. Uh, get the bowling ball up a little bit and secure the rope there. Uh, the idea here is that uh, we need to do everything we can to make sure that one, we don't accidentally add energy to the pendulum, and two, you don't accidentally encounter the, pen, the, the ball before it's all turned into potential energy. Uh, so a couple of things we're going to do to manage that. First off, as a very last resort here, uh, we're going to make sure that if the ball were to make contact, it won't, definitely won't. I've done this for 10 years, never had a problem. It won't, but if it does, we're gonna make sure it can, it's gonna hit something that has a little bit of give to it. Your teeth, not a lot of give to your teeth, but they break pretty easily. So we're not gonna smash anybody's teeth with the bowling ball. We're not gonna smash anything, but worst case scenario, we're gonna make sure it misses teeth. We're gonna go for nose instead. Nose has a little bit of a give to it. Also, broken nose is pretty cheap to fix. So, you know, no big deal if somebody gets a broken nose, right? There's a good, good amount of give to that. Yeah, 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 your, your nose is resilient. Okay. So, first thing that's going to happen when somebody sits down in this chair is I'm going to hold the bowling ball up to their uh, up to their body here. And notice that this bowling ball would not hit me in the nose; it hit me in the chest, which actually isn't a terrible place to get hit. But it's not nearly as scary as coming at your face. So we're going to change that. I'll raise it up a little bit. Yes. All right, and that looks about right there. Uh, next thing that's going to happen, uh, you to position it uh, to get the rope the right length, and while you're releasing it, your head's going to be all the way back up against the wall. If your head's like this, it'd be easy to release the bowling ball and then kind of lean forward without noticing that you've done that. So we want to make sure that can't happen. It's tough to lean forward by accident when your head's up against the wall. My head's up against the wall, and oh, I. Probably I'm not moving forward at all, right? No, no, that's that's easy to notice. Heads up against the wall, bowling ball up. I didn't test it when my head was against the wall. Rookie mistake. Rookie. All right, heads up against the wall. Yeah, that's not great either. Sometimes it'll take a couple little adjustments. We'll make sure it gets okay. Yeah, it inspires confidence. Yeah. All right, so something like this. Uh, last thing, if, if your hands are on the side, it's, it's possible for you to give this thing a little tiny push as you're releasing it, just as you move your hands back down towards your lap. So we're going to make sure that we cannot accidentally push this thing also. We do that just by holding it on the back side. I'm not saying it's impossible to give it a push this way, but you'd have to like palm the ball while you're pulling it forward, so it'd be a tough thing to do by accident. So I'm just going to hold it on the back side, not underneath, but on the back side here. Hold it all the way up to my nose. It's touching my nose right now. And then I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to let one of you be the brave first person to do it who hasn't seen it done before. Uh, last safety check that's going to be here is while you're in the chair doing all this, I'm going to be checking everything along the way. And if anything goes, goes weird, even if it's just kind of a wiggly drop or something, something just doesn't look right, I'll just stop the probe before it gets back to you. So, I'm your, your last line of defense here, but everything is set up so that there's very little danger. Yeah, do her. What questions do you have before we try it? Okay, so let's give this a shot then. Let's get my head up against the wall, hand on the back side of the bowling ball, right up to my nose. I'm gonna let it go and hope that physics knows what it's talking about. There we go. Oh man. Oh. And one more time, here's the close up view. Okay. Here we go. Oh, oh that's scary. But physics holds up, it doesn't get that back quite as far as it was when it was released and Conservation of energy uh, saves my butt here, or my nose, I guess.